Every basketball fan from L.A. to Sambor knows that Nikola Jokic is a basketball genius. We've certainly dissected it over the years on this channel, but a question I'm often asked is, how does that offensive awareness translate to defense? Meaning, if Jokic is such a savant, why isn't he a better defender? What I really think we're driving at here is how much does his basketball IQ actually help him on defense? Jokic's issues as a man defender have been discussed forever. He's a seven-footer who doesn't provide much shot blocking, and he's not super agile either, so he can be vulnerable guarding out in space. Centers typically provide the most rim protection, so in theory, having a weak shot blocking center limits a team's defensive ceiling. And in the last two years, Joker's contested a ton of shots within six feet of the basket, but he's barely lowered opponent field goal percentages based on what we'd expect, landing him in the 22nd percentile among all centers. Now, Jokic probably contests so many shots because opponents aren't really worried about his shot blocking, so they still shoot it when he's nearby. At the same time, when you pull him out to the perimeter and ask him to guard in space, he doesn't have the greatest lateral movement either. He comes out high to defend Steph Curry on this screen, struggles with the crossover, and then when he's back at the rim, doesn't provide that vertical protection. A lot of big defenders are vulnerable to sharp left to right changes in direction, but Jokic actually stops and starts pretty well for a big. He's cheating over to help on Kyrie Irving here, but when his man goes to pick, he's quick to hop out and briefly double Kyrie, then turn back and recover into the paint. So he actually moves backwards and in straight lines quite well. He recovers almost step for step with Bam Adebayo's role here to get back in front of him. And here he starts away from the ball, slides over enough to deter a shot attempt, then beelines it to the corner, and look where he was on this pass. That's a great reaction and the straight line speed to the corner. He actually overextends and is burned laterally again, but then flies back to influence the putback. And that is a ton of activity and ground to cover on a single play. He's actually a fairly high motor defender and combined with that solid stopping and starting ability and his straight line movement, he has good horizontal coverage on these plays where he's scrambling around with multiple efforts. So on a play like this, he can sag off his own man to position himself to read the floor. So when Jimmy Butler slips the screen, he plays a little goalie and nearly picks it off. And this time he's dropped back into the paint and touching that cutter is just enough for Dante Exum to think twice about passing it. Then that quick straight line movement to get out high and meet Kyrie, where he can slide in one direction fairly well, doesn't bite on the Hezzy, and that's defended pretty well, even with a bit of a late closeout on the shooter. This time he's roaming off Rudy Gobert, again takes away the cutter, then when Gobert tries to screen, he's quick enough to get out and take away the shot from Mike Conley. And Conley needs to skip it across court, but it's not easy to throw over a seven-footer. And Joker's pretty agile contesting like this and in one motion turning and recovering back to the play. So there's never an advantage created and the possession goes nowhere. And this ability to roam and recover really brings out that basketball IQ. He's lasered in on this pet Golden State action, so when the cutter slips out, he basically beats him to the pass for a turnover. Here's another one against the Warriors where he's perfectly positioned to handle that slip to the rim, but is also sitting on the pass to Curry, and that leads to some Joker showtime on the break. This is from the finals where he's more worried about Bam as a roller than the pull-up shooting of Kyle Lowry. So Jokic is in a drop, only he's reading Lowry's eyes and spins right to the rim to kill a layup. He's really good at reading opponents' eyes like this and disrupting passes, but he's also just generally good at understanding what the opposing team is trying to do. 
diagnosing this play and then making a very high IQ switch out to Clay Thompson. Then he keeps Clay in front of him briefly, only to read the next breakdown by lingering in the paint to help Jamal Murray. And only when Murray fully recovers does Jokic release back to his own man. And this possession was a defensive masterclass that would have looked a lot different without Jokic's reaction at the start of the play. This one's even better, where the Heat are in a bunch formation. Joker's wondering who Bam's going to screen for, and then it's a no-look steal. And that's a very quick reaction to the cutter, and it's confirmed Jokic has eyes in the back of his head. Um, Jokic has always had great hands defensively. They're extremely active, and his elite hand-eye coordination lets him target the ball accurately like this. And he'll even track passes as they're leaving your hand and snatch them that way. We've talked about his reflexes and quick hands helping adjust passing angles on offense. And there's a direct translation to defense where he tracks the passer's eyes and the ball and then adjusts accordingly. And this one's some Larry Bird nonsense after a turnover, plucking Kyrie's outlet right out of the air. And he's reading Irving the entire way and he's nimble enough to spin and snatch it with those great paws. Joker's been in the top 10% of the league in deflections per minute in each of the last two seasons because he has those great reflexes, really dangerous hands, and he reads offense as well. Lowry sets up the pick and roll here. He briefly steps in front of him, then defends the pocket pass while he recovers, so the pass has to come over the top, and Joker's big enough to get it and force a turnover. On this one, the Suns set up a two-man game on the wing. Jokic comes out to show on the screen, and the second Peyton Watson falls down, he jumps back to cut off Durant and takes away the roll pass. And this is that second recovery we saw earlier, defending the pocket pass and flowing right into better position on the roll. So he plays angles really well in two-man actions. He's pushing Booker down to the baseline here, but also kicking his foot out and waving his hands to defend all the passes. And don't forget about those kicks. The dude was like a hockey goalie in the finals last season, taking away entries and potential layups with this unorthodox technique that requires great reaction time. And he's also unorthodox in how he uses his hands in the paint as a form of rim protection. Most big men try to time up their jump to contest these drives vertically, but Jokic swipes at the ball down low with those big mitts. And this allows him to backpedal at different angles and still challenge shots without loading up to jump. That means when he's defending pick and roll, he can toggle from retreating in front of the ball right to the roller. And you'll often see him turn and get a swipe like this in these spots. So Nicola has a very ground-bound form of rim protection that comes with trade-offs. He doesn't smother a ton of attempts near the hoop or block a lot of shots, but he tries to position himself in a way to take away an easy layup while playing the pass. When offensive players come downhill in a two-on-one situation, he often plays the pass, which means sometimes there's going to be a relatively easy shot at the rim because two-on-ones are really high-value plays, but it can also produce incredible saves. Draymond Green's coming downhill on the short roll, and what we've seen for years in this situation is Draymond hitting a corner cutter with a lob on that short roll. Jokic had a front row seat to this one back in 2022, but this time he knows that lob is coming, so the instant Draymond picks up his dribble, he retreats to the pass and throws off the whole thing. We also saw this wild gambit in part two of the smartest plays of the year, where he basically fakes a charge to bait the pass and protects the rim that way. All of this means that Jokic doesn't foul that much while protecting the basket. And since he's often positioned well to take away easy options, teams don't end up with a ton of shots at the rim when he's on the floor, despite his lack of shot blocking. Opponents shoot right around the league average number of rim attempts when Jokic is on the floor. 
And among the 20 starting centers on postseason teams, he's on the weaker side in field goal percentage allowed. But remember, he doesn't foul that much on these contests. Among centers, he's in the top five in fewest shooting fouls committed per 100 possessions. So when we look at the number of points Denver gives up at the rim with Jokic on versus off the court, there isn't a big change. But when we account for how much they commit shooting fouls with him on the floor, suddenly he looks like a good paint protector. Now, part of this is not really having a great backup, and this doesn't make the Nuggets a great rim protecting team when he's on the court. But this has been a multi-year pattern that coincided with Jokic's improved conditioning and lower foul rates starting in 2021. So the Nuggets have built a defense around his strengths, and while he isn't the most versatile defender, you can certainly build a good defense around him now. Denver's actually had one of the best pick and roll defenses in the league this season on Jokic's coverages, according to Second Spectrum. He's also an excellent defensive rebounder. And another small factor that really helps in the playoffs is communication, which is something we've seen from him before. He spots a cross match here with Murray guarding Bam, frantically communicates to everyone, is still talking when Bam gets the ball, the help finally comes down, and it's another kick save. So he communicates well, recognizes threats, plays angles, and sometimes just reads offensive players' souls. For me, that lack of a vertical presence and some defensive rigidity make it hard for him to be a really good defender in today's game. But he's certainly not a bad one either. He's improved enough over the last few years that I might even consider him an above-average big man defender. And so, yeah, I think a big part of that is that Nikola Jokic's offensive genius actually translates to the defensive end. To support this channel, check out patreon.com slash thinkingbasketball. We have a stats board that we use to research these videos and all our podcasts. That's also just the best way to support us. Thanks so much for watching this one. Hope you're enjoying the playoffs and that you are having a great day.